So Isaac, I'll start with you. Um, had you, you know, had you seen the Gremlins movies before getting the role? Did you end up going back into them once you landed it? Yeah, I mean, I, I I saw it once when I was pretty pretty young, and then I did just end up going back into it eventually once I got the role itself. Uh, but I was pretty familiar. I was moderately familiar with it. I had to do a little bit of research to kind of just dig it back up into my brain. Uh, and once I did, you know, I got the hang of it. I mean, that sounds really bad. I I got it down. <laughs> I got it. I got it good. What was it like coming into this this franchise though? As Sam, you know, we we all know him as Mr. Wing, but now you are bringing new life to this character. Yeah, uh, a lot of pressure. A lot of people <laughs> looking. Uh, and not not even just at me, but a lot of people just looking at the show itself, or just like the other characters too. It's um, it's it's a lot. I mean, it's for such a huge fan base. You know, you just have a lot of people. A lot of people will uh, say stuff. You know, it, either good or bad. But uh, we'll see by the response of the audience. You never know. So AJ, for you with Gizmo, did it help that Joe Dante was around? Did you get to spend much time with him to try and get this voice down to make him the Gizmo we remember? Well, I mean, it was mostly me on my own. I didn't even, the only interaction I've had with Joe was I, I, he, I, he DM'd me or I DM'd him. I don't remember which one to tell him what a big fan of Erie, Indiana I was, which was a show in the nineties. Um, so I was like, wow, now's my opportunity. I was like the episode heart on a chain really messed me up for years, uh, where a little kid gets killed and then they give him the heart of the person. It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as the voice goes and getting into it, it was just me on my own in my closet. Just, it's a voice I've done since I was a kid. So I just kind of was like, oh, cool. I get to utilize this. And then I was shocked when they called me because I was like, can everyone do this voice? Um, <laughs> because I was so used to doing it. Uh, did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. What was it like for you, though, to then, you know, be able to bring this this character back to life for us? Weird. Uh, really, really weird and surreal. I mean, Gizmo hasn't had a voice in so long. You know, it's been so long since there's been anything Gremlins related, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so surreal to be like, oh, that you're going to use this, huh? My voice in Gizmo. That's very strange. So I, I've been, I'm still coping with it like we were watching the show last night and i'm like this is very surreal um because he's you know gizmo is a character right there uh <laughs> i grew up with it's it's strange to breathe new life into him sorry that was a long answer it's okay but you i mean you have been part of a lot of big franchises we're looking at star wars and the witcher and yeah too many to, <laughs> to count. Very lucky, yeah. Does, does that help with coming into another franchise where everyone's watching you going, are you going to mess up yet? Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> thankfully, each one's a new terror, you know, when I go in. Like, my first thing I did was Marty McFly, and then having people go, all right, well, is he going to get even close to Michael J. Fox or Star Wars with Han Solo? People going, does this sound anything like Harrison Ford or... Yeah, just did Figment recently for Disney, and it's like, just, you know, you always get that anxiety where it's like, are people going to hate this? Are they going to be like, this doesn't sound anything like the character I grew up with? So there's always that fear, and it doesn't change. It's always, it does help each time. I go, okay, you know, breathe. But uh, there's always new anxiety when it comes to, especially something like Gizmo, where everybody knows what he sounds like. So you just pray that it's it's up to people's expectations. So Gabrielle, was the pressure off having a, a new character to play? <laughs> um, in a way, yeah, because I, I could have some creative freedom with um, Elle and her, her storytelling. But of course, there's always that pressure of, oh, well, now there's this new person. Are people going to like this new character um, in addition to what they are already familiar with? But I think whenever you do, you know, a prequel or a revival of a franchise that's so big um, and as big as Gremlins or as big as Star Wars, I think there's always going to be opinions and there's always going to be some sort of pressure with, are people going to like it? Are they not? Is it going to continue with the nostalgia? Is it not? Um, but I think the three of us really just had a lot of fun. Can you tease anything about Elle? Because we, we know so little. At least we know, you know, Sam was is Mr. Wing eventually. And we know who Gizmo is. But who is Elle? 
I love that there's like this mystery around Elle because, you know, nobody knows her yet, um, but I do. So it's really fun um, to voice a character that's so far from who I am because I'm very bubbly. I love talking. I love meeting people. And Elle is the exact opposite. Um, she's very hardened. She has what I like to call a hardened heart. Um, she had some really bad things happen to her in her lifetime, which causes her to act the way that she does. Everything that she has has either been given to her or stolen. Um, nothing has been um, just just handed over. She's either earned it or has stole or has stolen it. But Elle is a really pivotal character in this series. She becomes fr becomes friends with Sam and becomes friends with Gizmo to try and get him back home to where he belongs. Um, and it's really fun to see the interaction between Sam, who is really sheltered, and Elle, who is really not. Um, they learn how to work together. So, you know, sort of like a, a one word, two word answer, you know, just for the last question. What are each of you excited for fans to see play out? Oh, I'm excited to see the adventure. I'm excited to see how fans respond to all of the adventures that they go on. Did you say what <laughs> are we excited for the fans to see? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it small. Uh, the scope, I guess the scope of the story and how big it is. We've never seen Gizmo and Co. go on this kind of adventure. So it's really expanding the mythology. That wasn't two words. I'm sorry. It's just the irony of, you know, I'll keep it small, but the I'll scope is big. I, what would I say? <laughs> Hamburger. I don't know. <laughs> There's no one word answer. Uh, good luck, Isaac. Know. Maybe like I'm stuck between two. It's like the the lore behind it. There's there's more kind of like lore to dig up, to that or the art because the art is really 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 beautiful. Um, just take a time, take some time to appreciate it. Put it as your wallpaper if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Um, I can't wait for fans to see it because I love it as a fan, and my kids who have never seen Gremlins yet they got a sneak peek of the trailer. So uh, they love it as well. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having us.